Okay, here I am in the kitchen and uh, <clears throat> just uh, had some conversations uh, with guys recently and I, I realized a couple of things. Number one, I'm obsessed with two gap defenders where a, a guy is aligned to threaten two gaps and I probably don't spend enough time with one gap defenders, okay? Um, you know, where he's... He's neither on this guy nor on this guy. He's sort of like right in the middle of it. And I thought I would do that uh, because I think it, it uh, when you look at the red light, green light, yellow light uh, system, it, it proves its worth in, in both of the instances. Um, okay, the first thing I want to say is your gap first. Okay, let me explain what I have here. I have five generic linemen. I have a line of scrimmage. I have a match area, a stovepipe, and we always run to the butt of somebody. And the stovepipe always, always consists of one, two, three guys. The match area could be one guy, could be two guys, could be three guys. The Apache area could, in this case, there's nobody. Okay, but it could be one guy, two guys, three guys. Uh, could be the quarterback holding somebody off. Could be a, a, a cross blocker. Okay, but it's generic in that, in that this little X is the read spot. Okay, this could be the tight end, this could be the uh, center for me, or if it's B gap, this could be guard, center, guard, if you're running at the butt of the guard. Okay, but that's neither here nor there, but just, just it's always three guys in the stovepipe. Okay. So the, the first thing we say to our kids is this. We like to protect our gap first. And when in doubt, block your gap. So if we're running zone this way, everybody's gap is to their right. And that's their seaside gap. That's what they see with their eyes. Okay. And if they're seeing here, if this is his seaside gap, this guy right here at the read spot, if that's his seaside gap, then he's got a blind side gap and blind people don't see, they feel, they don't look, they feel, okay, on the blind side. That's why we chose those words. Let me tell you something too about words. A guy told me this, a matter of fact, I'll mention who the guy is, is name dropping here, Dave Magazoo, he's a longtime NFL offensive line coach. And he said, don't try to invent a system. Don't try to, to take two systems and put them together because what you wind up is a hodgepodge of, of, of con contradictions. And of course, I didn't listen to him. And I, I went ahead and, and put together a system as a mixture. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a nightmare. And then I had another experience at Duke. You know, where we did the same thing. We tried to meld two systems together, take the best of both, and we took the worst of both. And uh, it didn't work out too good. So anyway, um, you know, this is these are my words, and they mean something to me. Um, you can't speak the language if you're talking Chinese. If you can't speak the language and you go to China and you don't speak the language, you can't order lunch. Okay, the number one thing that, that the offensive line coach has to be able to do is get five guys to think like one, one. That means that they have to have some sort of a language that they all use all the time. And if this is a mouse, okay, we can't call it a clicker. We can't have three guys calling it a mouse and two guys calling it a clicker because they cannot communicate with each other. That's just the way it is. Okay. Um, anyway, going to gap. Now, let's just say this. Uh, I'm going to recite green light, red light, and yellow light once again. Green light means for this guy, there's a guy in his gap. There's no doubt that there's a guy in his seaside gap. We're going this way. He can go get him. What makes him go gettable is that he's within striking distance, an arm's length. In other words, these two guys can strike each other without even moving their feet. Okay, that is green light. Okay, red light means 
that there is nobody close enough for you to touch with your hand nobody within striking distance unless you move okay so this guy's got green light he's got green light he's got green light okay these guys well you say well it's a gap coach i don't know he can touch me. yeah all right if you see it as red light it's red light that's it's okay it doesn't matter the gap is already blocked red light if you see it as yellow light which means that there's a guy close enough to touch me He's within striking distance, an arm's length. I keep putting my arm out here. Okay, but he's not in my gap. That means yellow light. Now, traditionally, I've, I've drawn yellow light in different ways. But, you know, basically, it's there's a guy close enough to hit me, but he's not in my gap. Now, if you reinterpret that any which way you want, God bless you and go for it. But when you do anything other than what I'm saying here, you wind up with a hodgepodge of stuff if you take half of what I say and try to piece it together. Now, I'm not telling you what to do. <clears throat> Quite frankly, I don't know what you do, and I I dig ditches right now. That's what I do. <laughs> okay, I, I got to go repair the, the garage door. That's what I do. Okay, and this thing's getting long-winded. We haven't gotten to anything yet. Okay, but anyway, here's the read spot, this little X. This is this lesser than, greater than that. Everything here is the Apache. We don't have any Apaches. Here's the stovepipe. One, two, three guys. Here's the reed spot. I can put a little spot right on his butt. That's where the back is going. Here's the match area. Okay. These defenders are clearly in the gap. So is he. Okay. He knows that the reed spot is to his blind side. Why would he want to step deep? To try and cover this guy he wouldn't he would downshift and immediately okay match this guy and we say match him because we'd like him to get to, to wind up getting wide and I've covered this before but I'm covering it again okay if he steps deep and this guy rocks or long sticks he might miss him even when if he's playing long he might miss him so why do that why give up leverage but but why not use leverage to your advantage and step downshift and go to the footwork uh, film to see what downshift is, okay? The key to downshifting is firm stomping steps, but condense, drag your tail on the ground. If, you, if your ass is up in the air, your legs are straight, and you are going to get rocked, okay? You might get a little pushback if this guy two gaps you, but if, you, if you're doing what we say you're doing, you can stretch him, grab him, and you'll, you'll do fine, okay? Now, we go hats for hats. So this guy looks and he says, well, gee whiz, there's nobody out here. Okay, I got to start thinking about this. And plus the point system tells us that that's our, our mic point. So these two guys obviously have got to handle that. Now, the problem is... He has leverage on nobody. He can. He is going to go into the match area with one step, and he's got leverage on both these guys. All right. So he's got green light. He's got. Well, I don't know, Coach. I, you know, I, I think it's yellow light. Well, great. That's yellow light. Great. Oh, it's red light, Coach. Oh, that's great too. That's great too. He's got green light, right? Okay, good. But Coach, I can't get to this guy. If I if I if I downshift out, I can't. I it would be hard for me to get to him. I can go if I pierce, but I can't. It would be hard for me to get to him, okay? It would be easier for me to handle this as yellow light and get a hay bale and knock this guy out, okay? Now, if that's not what I want to do, okay, if I want to go red light, all right, I know he's going to cover that thing up. This guy's going to fall back. There's no doubt about it. I still step to my gap first, and then I go and rewind and I chip the crap out of this guy and knock him in so that this backer gets shut off and has to come back to me. And if I knock him in, the back's not stupid. He's going to he's going to go that way. If he if he does something else, he's he is stupid. OK, now going back to this, if the man rocks any which way, it's pretty simple. Okay, 
whether you've decided to hay bale it or not, if this guy rocks out, it's an easy grab for the guard. And the, and the guy goes right to the, right to the center. I mean, it, I don't think it's a big deal. Okay, so I guess my point is, if the guard sees it as yellow light, great. He thinks he can pull this guy out of it with a little bit of help, great. If the guard sees it as red light, he says, okay, good. <coughs> I have two people. Now, if somebody else shows up, different story. Now we're, we're going to train it. There's too many guys, right? Five guys, there's five guys. Six guys shows up, we got to make a decision. We can book one, book whatever we're going to do. That's a game plan thing, okay? But right now, we want two for two, okay? Does that make sense? All right. Now, going to this side of the thing, this is the stovepipe. These guys are all stovepipe. The back is going to make them right. That's what that means. The back is like smoke, okay? It's going to, he, as long as he runs at the read spot, he can cut behind that block. So what we say is, okay, good. The first thing we have to do is protect our gap. We always, always, always protect our gap first, unless there's an Indian situation where the leverage is so stupid. Okay, there's so many guys inside that if this guy protected his gap first, he would leave this cat two two guys to block. So there he would Indian. And we try to eliminate Indian as much as possible by telling the center, if that's the deal, let's train it and screw the backside. We'll just, we'll keep everybody in the zone. Okay. Indian means step with your inside foot. Indian. That's a recent name that I used. But right now, probably don't have to Indian. Okay. We've already talked about how to handle this. Okay, this guy is in the stovepipe. He's got green light. He is going to scoot, scoot, and cover. This guy, you can say, well, gee whiz, he's yellow light or he's red light. I, I don't know. Okay, let's just say that he decides that he is, because this man is matching, he's going to protect him. And it's it's this type of thing, okay, right, right, right there. Let's just say he decides that that's yellow light. He's still going to downshift because he doesn't want to shut this guy off. Okay, what we don't want to do is get into a bunch of these communication problems where all of a sudden there's a mugger that we have to protect the gap and he thinks he's getting help and we have to, and the quarterback doesn't know what the hell you're doing anyway. So he's just snapping the ball and off we go, we get our, we get a TFL because he thinks he's getting too much help and blah, blah, blah. So the first thing we do is step to the gap. Okay, anything that hits the gap, we grab it. End of story. And we're assuming that anything that hits the gap is going to force this guy to, to work at least towards this man. Okay? Got it? All right. Now, whether it's ye yellow or red light, the counts are saying that that's handled. That, obviously, this is the point. This is the minus backer. Okay? The backer that's backside. I got to handle him. Well, guess what? I either chip it if I, if I feel like it's red light and if this guy gets a nice piece of it, I just rewind and chip it and the backer should come right to me. If it's some sort of a, a stunt, okay, I shut it off and the back should hit it here, okay, and possibly if it, if it, if it gets clean enough, we'd always prefer in this instance to stay on this guy and let him run, okay, maybe somebody else will get him, okay. Uh, but if it's a clean exchange, why not? Exchange it. Sh screw it. It's easy. This guy, boom, he runs right into the linebacker. Simple as pie. It can't be any easier. If it's a cross charge, okay, a, any kind of cross, he rocks out, he rocks out. This guy goes here, boom. He goes here, boom. Okay, that's pretty simple. The point backer crosses the minus. Okay, this guy gets grabbed by the guard. The center squares up, waits for the minus. He grabs the point backer. He grabs the three technique. We've got it all picked up. Let me let me stop this for a second and, and draw that properly for you. Okay, we're back. And this is a, a, a typical cross charge. If you're in the uh, the shotgun, okay, let's say he's the center of running A-gap. Uh, generally speaking, the back's over here. The, this backer, the backer away from the back will go this way and try to draw the center, and he'll come and hit it. We had a, uh, I had a, uh, an instance uh, in uh, 
2004 uh, at the University of Maine where I told the center we were going to play Montana and I told the center exactly what was going to happen. I said, but here's what you're going to do. You're going to track this mic because you, you don't buy me and you don't listen to me and you think you know more than I do. Okay. And this guy's going to come and hit the back right in the head. And sure as hell, uh, that's exactly what happened. But he tracked, he, he stepped to the nose, he saw the mic cross, he, he uh, rotated and chased the mic and the wheel came and hit the back right in the head. I got him on the sideline. I said, what do you think? He goes, all right, I'll listen to you. And from then on, he's been sort of like a, a, a model citizen in terms of listening. Not that he doesn't ask questions, because you got to ask questions if you don't understand. But he doesn't ask the same question over and over and over and over and over again. He just says, look, okay, I'll do it your way. And if it works, great. And usually it works. And if it doesn't, I change it. Okay, that's just the way it is. Anyway, so that's pretty simple. Whatever the guard decided to do, he winds up grabbing. The center falls right into it. Everybody's eyes are looking at the point. He knows the point's going blindside, and he knows, well, good. That's my gap. This guy better be there for me. This guy's going to be here. Here comes the will. Boom. I picked it up. Okay? It's easy. We love to see it. Love to see it. Okay? I'm going to shut this down for a second. Okay, so now all I did was I flipped the front. So if this is still the read spot guy, instead of having a guy in his gap, he's got a guy blindside. He's got a guy in his gap. Okay, everybody's happy here. Okay, there's no big deal. All right, what we say here is this tackle has got to say, he's got to decide if this guy is a cop or not, if he's going to, if he can threaten that. Okay, and let's just say he says, nah, this guy's a big, big down line and he's going to, okay, so that's what we wound up doing. We match and match, okay. The center knows that he's getting matched by the guard because these guys are in the match area. That's what they do. They match, okay. They downshift and match. That's what they do. This is the point backer. He's, he knows that he's got to get to the point backer. But what I say to him is red or yellow, stay square because you're moving to air. Okay, so this guy's got to come to you. Somebody's got to come to you, but you can really focus on that because he is matched. Okay, now it doesn't mean that the guy won't rock to you, but hey, if he does, at least at least the guard's going to track him a little bit and attack him. In other words, these two guys are not cutting these guys off or cutting them loose if they spike. They're, they're, they're going to stay with it. They're going to rewind with it. Okay, so... This guy says, well, hmm, I'm in the stovepipe. I got to cover this dude. I'm going to cover him up. Okay, here's the minus. And, and he says, well, there's the point. There's the minus. I got to get to the minus. Okay, how am I going to do it? All right. So we know that we're matching here. Well, guess what? Downshift. Okay, it's easy. And if you downshift, you might be able to rewind and give this guy a little chip if this guy hangs out. And just and just pick him up now if you pick him up you want to match him okay you don't want to go here okay you don't necessarily want to go here because you're not really trying to cover him you want to match him okay he's getting cover might get help he's told don't count on help don't count on help okay this guy knows that he's got to get all the way down to here all right now to me we, we, a lot of people say, we'll go and arrow him. Okay, we don't do that. We say, is this guy, this guy's a threat to rock. There ain't no doubt about it. So what we want to do, because you're in the stovepipe, we want to shuffle to it, okay, in case there is a rock. Because if this guy's covering, he's not going to really be able to protect you that much, okay. And if, if he doesn't rock, go ahead and cover that linebacker, okay. Go ahead and cover them. But you're going in this direction first. Okay. You probably, because if that was a tackle, and we know it's a pretty quick play, we wouldn't shuffle very far. Okay. We'd take no more than two shuffles. And then we would just go where the leverage of that backer told us. So it's, again, it's an arcing movement. Okay. It's not an arc step. It's a, it's a, I shouldn't even have said arc. Okay. But I'm not going to change this whole thing. All right, just what it is, is it's not a straight line. We don't use straight lines, okay? We don't use straight lines, okay? 
we say, you're covering, you're covering his ass to make sure that nothing rocks, and then you're going to go to that backer. Okay, that's just the way it is. That's as simple as I can make it. I can't make it any simpler. If you don't use green, red, and yellow light, you can't, you can't use this system. Okay, and if you don't know what that means, it, it's kind of meaningless. Um, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't help you select the proper tool. Okay, now you, there might be a better way to do it. There might be another way to do it. There might be a whatever, but you're watching this because you, you seem to think that my way might be a good way. Okay, I honestly don't give a, a hoot what you do. Um, you know, if you, if you ask me, this is what I would do. If you're not, if you're my boss and you're telling me what to do, I'll do it. That's the way it is. I'll do it. But let's just go over this for a second. Let's say he's a threat. Match him. Match him. Match him. Cover him. Cover him. End of story. Scoot, scoot. Downshift, downshift, downshift. It can't get any easier. Okay. If it does, if it is easier, it's not as it's. It won't cover as many things. And remember, we don't want to get TFLs. Okay, we don't want to get TFLs. So we do not want anybody penetrating to the read spot. We don't want that to happen. We will we will do whatever we can to protect that read spot and let that running back hit it. Okay, that's all I got for you today. It's 21 minutes, unfortunately. I think sometimes people watch about five minutes of this thing, think they know it. Maybe they do. Maybe they know it better than me. If you know it better than me, give me a call because I could use the help. Bye.